All right, welcome back to Vicky Three Academy, and here we are discussing a, our, our Egypt guide. So I'm refreshing our kick the tire here for Egypt because I think we've learned a lot about how to interact with Egypt from playing the Ottoman Empire. So the first thing that I want to tell you when it comes to Egypt um, is that you you need to decide what your goal is for the campaign. Um, you can form Arabia. Um, which would require you to, you know, conquer and interact with a lot of the Middle East, and that I think is a really fun uh, little challenge for people. But if you're doing that right now in 1.0.6, you need to have um, the ability to intervene in any civil wars that happen, because if there's a civil war in Mahra or Bahrain or anything like that, you're never going to be able to conquer them because you can't conquer uh, states that are at civil war and they're going to be so poor that they're never going to be able to kill each other. Um, so just be aware that if you're if you are going for forming Arabia, you need to keep a very close eye on on the poorest parts of your claimed empire. So as Egypt, what do you start with? What's the situation? So right now we are this um, this guy, Muhammad Ali. Uh, this is the Khadiv of, of Egypt. He has very recently uh, led a a I wouldn't necessarily call it a rebellion, but he, he has annexed all of the Levant um, from the Ottoman Empire under Mahmoud II by just pushing his way all the way up here. And then finally, the, the great power said, all right, have a ceasefire. Um, but that means that Egypt is currently ascendant and you start with some pretty good technological advantages over the over the Ottoman Empire. You start with line infantry and Napoleonic warfare. And so you need to prioritize just hitting them as soon as your um, as as your truce comes out, uh, and just prioritize making just blowing them up, because um, you can always pick up the pieces afterwards. But you want to make them you know like liberate back. Uh, you want to make them liberate Iraq, and you want to make them liberate Bulgaria, and you want to make them liber uh, liberate Albania, maybe Bosnia Herzegovina. I like the more that you can make the Ottoman Empire um, to suffer in the first war the easier it's going to be for you to come back because you do start nominally weaker than they do, right? Your GDP is smaller. Um, your population is smaller. Um, the big advantage that you have is that your military has guns and cannons and is very, very advanced versus where theirs is. And you do not want to give them the opportunity to, to find friends. So, Aim to um, destroy the Ottoman Empire as soon as your your first uh, truce is up. Um, our truce is, I think, 80, uh, 38? Yeah, January 1838. So make sure that when you get to this part, um, you're going to be able to do to, to, to declare war on them um, if they aren't if they don't declare war on you first, because you you do want to fight them. Um, but in terms of the decisions that you make internally, I think one thing that I want to recommend to you, if you are patient and willing to re-roll for it, is to re-roll re for an abolitionist, ideally in the petite bourgeoisie or the ulema, um, but it either one is fine, it doesn't particularly matter, because the nature of your government in the Egypt is, is pretty good with one big asterisk. Let's take a look at their laws, right? So we don't start in traditionalism. Awesome. We don't start in isolationism. Awesome. Also, we start in per capita taxation instead of land-based. Wow, so good. Um, we even start in racial segregation instead of national supremacy. Banger. And we don't have peasant levies. Oh, boy. So, like, a lot of the good law work is already done for us. Um, we do need to get out of hereditary bureaucrats. That's important. But then we look over here in our human rights. Serfdom and slave trade. Oh boy. So with serfdom and slave trade on the, the books, you kind of need to decide, is it going to be worth it to fight a civil war or not? Um, I'm not going to go through fighting a civil war as Egypt in this video, because I think it's going to be pretty hard due to the diplomatic and um, military situation you find yourself in after you've defeated the Ottoman Empire in your next war and made them release a bunch of land, um, then you might have the breathing space to fight a civil war. But in the meantime, there's a lot of stuff you can do, and I think the most important thing that you should be trying to do is end serfdom, not not ending slavery right away. So if you want to end serfdom, then abolitionist is still useful. You see, it says opposes serfdom. So what that means is by bringing the petty bourgeoisie into the government and working with them to end serfdom, because um, we can do that. 
we 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 are missing the strength um from the the rural folk right now so that's a little disappointing but it's not the end of the world but in the meantime we can do stuff that's going to make everybody happy we can get dedicated police force or local police force if you really want to just like jack up the happiness of the the landowners it's okay to go into local police force temporarily um cuz oh, oh no it's going to radicalize a marginalized political group the intelligentsia are marginalized in, in Egypt, so you have the flexibility to be pretty conservative at the beginning of the game while also um, getting yourself out of the three critical laws here. You want to get out of hereditary bureaucrats, you want to get out of serfdom, you want to get out of slave trade. But I think out of those, you actually probably do want to get out of serfdom first, reason being corn laws. So one of the things that I, I definitely feel like I, I, I didn't even think about at all uh, in the last Egypt video is you want to go, you want to do something that's going to make your landowners happy, and then you want to go in here and immediately get serfdom done, and then you'll be able to do um, corn laws, and that will allow you, and, and you'll do corn laws with a really expensive grain, so, you know, be aware that, that it might be a little spooky in terms of the cost of your pops for a little bit. But if you can do that and get a free trade person in, in here instead of um, a moderator or whoever you end up with, the free trader will allow you to get a ton of happiness with the landowners, which allows you to just like change a bunch of their laws without them even forming uh, resistance groups. Because that's where the problem with law work can come up, is that if, if you aren't doing something to prevent the landowners from being able to like stop you, um, they, they will be really annoying. You do start with just an, a really sweet collection of laws here, though. You even start with freedom of conscience and right of, right of assembly, which means you can go into guaranteed liberties. Like, th this is a, a master class in terms of effectiveness, um, except for the, the three that we've, we've highlighted. It's not even that, like, agrarianism is horrible in comparison to laissez-faire, but if you're in free trade... If, or rather, if you have a free trader in control of the landowners, that's like a plus 20. Um, and going from mercantilism to free trade is also like another plus 20. So you can just have like an, an insanely, insanely loyal landowner while you strip them of serfdom and, save and slave trade and hereditary bureaucrats. And then maybe even come back and switch out from local police force into dedicated. I think generally I would recommend going into local first just because it's going to give you a plus 10 instead of a plus um, a plus five and all you're really passing a, this this sort of police force for is to get the happiness necessary um to remove serfdom right because you get plus uh 10 here and then you sack 10 here and then you go ahead and you get your your leader who will allow you to go in here and get a plus 20 approval and a, a plus 20 approval. And that means that you can do this like very, very easily, even though it's going to naturally be a minus 20 because you're just going to be able to have infinite uh, favorability with a landowner. So once you've done um, all of that landowner work, you're probably going to want to be picking up all of this territory in Arabia. But be aware that you do have a fairly large um, population that, that you start with incorporated. So don't be afraid to colonize. Like, 9 million, you're not, this is not Sweden, right? Like, Sweden is going to struggle immensely to colonize. Egypt, the moment that you have quinine online, should almost certainly be colonizing anywhere that, that has um, just regular malaria and probably can get away with colonizing in severe malaria areas as well. It just kind of depends on how, how big they've been able to grow. So beyond um, the, the basic strategy of trying to utilize um, corn laws to keep your landowners happy while you're stripping their, their, their laws away, you do need to be aware that you are you are right here in the middle with, with the Suez Canal. Depending on the nature of the AI that you are playing with, um, they might get a little spicy. Uh, so I would, I would do your absolute best to be as um, friendly and approachable towards all of the other great powers until you have sufficiently destroyed the Ottoman Empire, because they are going to be your, your number one threat for a little while. But you do have a really big navy too, and so don't be afraid to use that for imperializing purposes. Like you can puppet people um, if you discover, oh yeah, I want to pick up, uh, you know, Madagascar because it has an enormous amount of of coal. Then do so, right? That's totally fine. Your goal when it comes to to Egypt is kind is pretty open because you are a very powerful, unrecognized major power. 
you are eventually going to need to gain recognition, which is going to require that you fight um, somebody, probably Austria, maybe Russia, um, maybe the United States, depending. Um, but you should be able to get recognition from someone after, after growing sufficiently. In terms of your internal resources, you do have some pretty interesting bonuses just because of the Nile River. So there's our uh, Nile River bonus that we have here on the wheat farms. But then you can see here, not applied to the tobacco plantations, unfortunately. Um, not applied to cotton plantations either. I think I think given the uh, the restrictions here in terms of the value of the the Nile, if you're going to try to use the agricultural throughput bonus that you you specialize in in groceries, I think that that's fine. Um, it's not exciting, and I think that the best way to develop as Egypt is to continue to just chase the resources that naturally bring you towards imperialism. Um, so that is chase your chase coal around the map chase iron around the map and chase logging camps around the map because those are gonna those are really gonna supercharge your economy especially coal and iron because you can see here you only you start with uh 79 coal that's not bad um but you start with only 60 iron you need to find iron uh that's really just what it boils down to and by by checking in in our iron we can see the potentials on the map big slice here right big big slice there big slice here too if you want to get a lot of iron pretty quickly, one of the easiest ways to do it as, as Egypt is Puppet Zulu, Puppet Transvaal, Puppet Orange. Just just go right down there, Puppet those three. You'll 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 thank me later because um, like you, you're just gonna get a ridiculous amount of resources here. 104 coal, 104 coal. All right, yep. Um, so yeah, that's, I think, the basic the basic development plan for Egypt. At least that's what I would recommend. When it comes to utilizing your authority, I think the best thing that you can be doing most of the time is going to be suppressing your landowner. Um, but don't be afraid to do some consumption taxes. Don't be afraid to increase your taxes either. I wouldn't decrease your government wages too much because you do need to be able to work with the petit bourgeoisie. Um, and you're going to need them to be kind of like uh, not only happy, but powerful. Uh, and so taking away their money is generally not going to help you. Same with military wages, because these are these are the things that get you uh, IGs that are associated with your leader. So that's also kind of kind of tough to kind of tough to ignore. Oh, and if you really want to, you can also make your your uh, dude into a general, which can be pretty cool, depending on on the kind of stats that he rolls. Um, cause he's, he does start with innovative, persistent, and ambitious. Those are some pretty solid, um, commander stats. 20, 50% morale damage protection is huge, huge. Um, not to mention a surprise maneuver chance. So he's a, he's a pretty good general. Um, so just, just be aware of that. Um, and don't, don't neglect, uh, your, your heir either. The more that he can fight in battle and gain popularity, the more it'll help you out. All right. Uh, that's, uh, that's Walker, and that's just a nice little Egypt, uh, tutorial, I think. Um, if, if that is, if that answers the questions you have about the basic development for Egypt, I, I, I hope that you, uh, like and subscribe if you have not already. I'll just keep working on, on country guides, um, and replacing some of the older ones, because some, some of the older ones, I think, I think there are some missing pieces. Uh, but I think, I think this Egypt guide will get you, will get you where you need to go. All right, take care.